Hi, I'm Erin from the Center Township Branch Library. Let me put away my favorite Harry Potter book and let's make some magic. Today we are going to make wands. We usually give these out at our Harry Potter event at the Center Township Library. We're unable to do that this year, so I will teach you how to make them at home. You will need a hot glue gun with hot glue sticks, something to make your wands out of. You may use pencils, chopsticks, or venture into your backyard and grab regular sticks, a variety of natural colors of acrylic craft paint, and a clear glaze to coat your wand. So you'll want to cover your surface with newspaper or cardboard and plug your hot glue gun in. Please ask a grown-up for assistance as hot glue is hot. So once your glue gun is nice and warm and the glue comes out easily, go ahead and get your chopstick and start applying your glue. You can make the designs any way that you wish. And remember, you can always add more after it dries. Piling the glue on one end and then letting it melt down makes interesting designs. A trick to get your glue gun to pull away without creating a long strand of glue is to just create a circle quickly and then pull away. Don't worry about any glue strings. You can pull them off later when it dries. And if you run out of glue, just put another glue stick in and keep going. The designs are up to your imagination. Depending on how many wands you decide to make, an egg carton is the perfect holder for it to dry. When using the pencil, I recommend that you use the eraser and metal side as the handle, since that will be covered up with the glue. A nice design that I often like to use is a swirl or twist and you just hold the glue gun in one place as you turn your wand. Most wands will take one or two glue sticks a piece depending on how much glue you apply. So have a nice good supply and have them close. And I do like to cover the very end so that you don't have the eraser poking out and you've got a nice rounded end to fit in your hand well. Don't want to get poked or blisters while you're doing your magic spells. That will create a very nice handle. If you don't have chopsticks or pencils handy, you can go into your yard or a park and find a stick um, the size is dependent on what you uh, want it to be. I don't really like it this long, so I'm just going to break the edge of it off. And it's got kind of a nice curve. And you can decide which side fits better in your hand. I think I'm going to make this the handle. On the top there, so it's not so rough, I'm going to put a little dab of glue. And then I'm going to go ahead and work on the handle. I like a nice, thick, sturdy handle, so that's going to take probably a couple glue sticks to get it to the size that I want. And sometimes you'll get grips, which is good to have the cardboard. You don't want to grab it when it's hot, though, because it does get warm. If you do get grips, you can just kind of turn it, and it should twist around. Even though the stick has a nice natural wood texture, I'm gonna beef up this ending part here so it looks like there's a different wood that the handle is made out of. And one of the Harry Potter characters does have a curved wand similar to this. Do you know which one?
Wand making can be very therapeutic. You can watch your favorite Harry Potter movie, listen to your favorite Harry Potter audiobook, or just listen to the soundtrack. Rotating it kind of like a marshmallow on the fire will also kind of help to round it out and keep it even with gravity working on it. So you'll want to let your hot glued wands dry overnight or for about 24 hours before painting, just to make sure that the glue is set and nice and solid. Um, if you do want to add more hot glue on top of what you've already done, you only have to wait until it's cool to the touch to add. After you've waited 24 hours for your wands to dry, go ahead and prep your area. You wanna cover your surface. You want a jar of warm water. An egg carton works good to put your paints in. And then you can just use any craft acrylic paint. And go ahead and put into your palette or egg carton. I always like to use a little bit of metallic paint just for the details. So this is a metallic gold. And you don't need much. Your chopstick has a very good natural wood color. You don't want to paint that. That's fine. You want to get in all those little crevices so that those details really come out. And any kind of craft brush is fine to use. Make sure to get in between the glue. I want the whole handle to be like a dark black color. Once it's all painted, at least that first coat, you can go ahead and put it back in your egg carton to dry and start on the next one. Well, this is also the time where you're going to want to pull all those little hot glue strings off. But I am going to do a brown for these glue pieces. Just a little contrast, but not so much as that black. And I think I'm going to let the natural wood kind of poke through my handle here. So I'm just going to paint the glue part. You want to use careful strokes where it meets the regular wood. You don't have to be too, too picky about it. And it looks like I got a little paint right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this part, but then leave that upper part, that natural color. And then we'll let that guy dry. And I'll show you a quick clip here of me painting the thick wand. I think it turned out really great. So here's a wand fully painted. We've painted both ends. We've done just a black in the middle. And we've painted, you know, all of the little glue bits and the entire wood piece. Another one that we've painted, we added some purple, a little metallic silver, purple on the end. And then I did metallic silver here on the details to make a little cursive E. And again, this one is fully painted with the middle, the brown and the little bit peeking through in the end just to make a nice handle. And then here's one with a dry brush effect that I'll show you how to do here shortly. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush this um, black one that I painted. I wanna add a little more detail to these ridges just to highlight that. Um, and instead of another brown, I'm just going to use a little bit of the metallic gold, just a little bit on a dry brush. And I'm just going to very subtly go over those ridges just so that it looks a little antique -y. It looks a little worn. The higher your paint is underneath, the better this will be. Just adding a little shimmer, a little metallic, just on those ridges. You'll notice I've not been rinsing my brushes in between using. I like to um, pick one brush to use with one color, and then if I want, if go ahead and mix something, um, then that's fine, then I can rinse them. But sometimes it's easier to not have all the water on the brush, especially with the hot glue. Um, the more water or the wetter your brush is, the more it's gonna thin the paint, and the paint is not gonna stick so well to your hot glue. So multiple brushes is my tip. So after your wands have dried and you're done painting, I would let them dry for 24 hours or so. 
Um, you can lay them out on your cardboard outside in a well-ventilated area with a grown-up's help. And you want to go ahead and use a clear glaze to seal the wands. And I like a nice gloss finish on the wands. And that is just going to um, make sure that the paint doesn't scratch off as easy. Um, and it adds a nice shine. So laying them out so that you can coat all the way around with the gloss is good. And then make sure that you give them a turn and get the back side as well. And then let those dry until they are not sticky, and probably a little bit longer than after they are not sticky. Um, and then you are ready to do your spells. Our completed wands. Thanks for joining me today and making your own Harry Potter wand. Back to the story.